So the, the, does that mean that Jesus came back to 2014? I don't think so, because that's an approximation. So then what is this day too good for? This day is good for so we can get rid and know that we're very, very close. Okay. Uh, so Jesus said, this is like generation. So uh, more or less uh, around 2014, Jesus coming back. When? I don't know. I don't have the date specifically. But... Uh, 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 how do I know that he's not coming back in 2014? Because there are prophecies supposed to be fulfilled, which are not fulfilled yet. Uh, number one, the financial crash so is going to come. Uh, next uh, is the rise of the Antichrist. Uh, number uh, third uh, is the Antichrist will uh, make a covenant for seven years, like, mm -hmm. like it says in uh, the Antichrist will rise, as we know, by Daniel. Uh, 11, 20, 21, the rise of the Christ. And then we know he's going to make a seven-year covenant. We know that by Daniel 9, 27. We know he's going to break it in the middle, Daniel 9, 27 again. And we know that uh, uh, it will place an abomination of desolation, Daniel 11, 31. We know that will cause great tribulation, Daniel 11, 31 to 35, Matthew 24, Revelation 13. And we know that after the tribulation, Matthew 24, 29, mostly by the other the scriptures shows it just as clear. After the tribulation, Matthew 24, 29, the rapture comes. So these things are supposed to happen before Jesus comes back. Uh, at least uh, it's a space of seven years for sure. He has to sign a cover for seven years. And uh, attention, the a temple must be rebuilt in Jerusalem. So as you see, there is a lot of prophecy before Jesus comes back, uh, that which needs to be fulfilled. Amen. So, in other words, the dates you gave are just a proof that we are very close to the end and we need to get ready. But it's not that you gave the day and the hour and some people give the second when Jesus comes back. We, <laughs> we will be able to give uh, the, the, the day. Yes, but so far we don't know. As soon as the Antichrist signs a covenant, okay, which now they already have a covenant for seven years between Europe and Israel, it's called NP. 2007, they made that covenant for seven years, Euro and uh, the country, including Israel. Mm -hmm. It's for seven years and it expires to this year, 2013, 31 of December. So if they renew it another seven years, that could be the last seven years of world's history, understand? Okay. Now, how do, right? yes. how do we know that's the last seven years? We don't know. We will know if the temple is, is, is beginning to be rebuilt. Because in order for the... Um, Antichrist uh, to stop a daily sacrifice, there must be a daily sacrifice. Temple, yes. In order to have a, a daily sacrifice, there must be a temple. Right. That's why the Jews don't have a sacrifice, they don't have a temple. In order for them to build the temple, they have to make a, a, a treaty, a covenant with the Palestinians, right? So they want independence and the Jews what they want they want a temple. So now the, what they're talking about now, the, every day they talk about peace, 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 peace. They will have peace. So if in 2014 or they can postpone to 2015, 2016. That, that's up to them. Whenever you hear that they make a car for seven years, you need to see, are they building a temple? If the answer is yes, those are the last seven years. And then if from that moment, you can start counting the days. Mm -hmm. 1,260 to the breaking of the covenant and placing of the abomination, or 2,520 days, which is seven years, until the rapture. Mm -hmm. So you can count... Uh, uh, the days and um, probably even the hours. Yes. But first, you have to see a the Antichrist, the, this great leader, politician, world leader signing a covenant. And, until when he signed the covenant, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be world leader. He would be just a, a, a nice looking guy. And then uh, he will make it for seven years. Then you need to pull out your binoculars and say, Are they making a temple? If the answer is yes, that's it. Start counting the days. Seven years, Jesus comes back. Uh, three years and a half, they get tribulation. They say, get ready. Start heading for the mountains, wherever you have to go. I saw, I already moved now. I was in Europe. I moved out from Europe, uh, okay, two years ago, because as a way, I want to be a jump ahead. I moved to South America. I'm here in a beautiful, <laughs> wonderful place. Witnessing is good. The weather is great. The people are sweet. And I'm out of the hell of the, of the, of the, West, of the Western countries where things are getting more and more under the mark of the beast. You understand? So, so, conclusion, um, you'll yeah. be counting the days. Yes, I will give you the, the, the exact day when I see the temple going up. But you don't know yet. We don't know yet. So right now what we know is uh, what we see happening in the world. We're putting together the different signs that are happening in the world, comparing them with the Bible prophecies. We see the, the mark of the beast already starting to being implemented. Which we, we believe is the microchip. Yes. 
we see the Europe uh, uniting. We see Europe making this treaty with the um, Mediterranean countries. And they call it NP, the smoke in your eyes. <laughs> the yard is a seven-year covenant. And so on. Many different signs that we see around the world put them together, and therefore we can realize that we are in the end time. But we don't know exactly the day when Jesus will come back. All we can do is prepare. Now, somebody asked us, somebody said this, you, Brother Joseph, and your family, your mission, left Europe assuming that we're in the end time. What if you were wrong and you left Europe? <laughs> well, first of all, I'm enjoying it. You've got a beautiful, wonderful mission field. And, uh, well, listen, all the prophecies are pointing there. Just uh, look at the signs of Matthew 24, and not only. There are signs everywhere in the Bible. In, in the book of Timothy, it's in the last, uh, 1 Timothy 4, 2 Timothy 3, and 2 Timothy 4. Yes. Yes, it's, yes. it's all signs. It's a beautiful field. The question is, what if you will find out, let's say, that you were wrong? What? How would you feel? Would you feel bad you left Europe like no, that? No, I feel wonderful. We are in a wonderful place here. I'm witnessing. We are evangelizing. We are here in a place about 800 meters high by the mountains. It's a wonderful weather. It's, I enjoy everything, the food, the, the, especially <laughs> uh, the people are sweet, uh, the witnessing is great, uh, we're evangelizing, and the Jesus is going to all the world and preach the gospel. We are into all the world. We are here we're in South America, almost everybody speaks Spanish. Uh, we already changed three countries, traveling around. We are happy and fulfilled, and uh, I really don't think uh, uh, I really don't think it's wrong. I really believe that we, we are in the end time. Oh, look at a guy there passing by with a horse. It was so <laughs> cute. Yeah. It's just like an oasis. Praise God. Amen. The next question I have is, who will populate the millennium? And where do these people come from? Are they present-day Christians? They cannot be Christians because the second that Christ comes back, the Christians will lose the natural bodies and gain immortal bodies, like it says in First Corinthians 15. Are they uh, present-day non-Christians? It is impossible to be non-Christians because there are uh, many scriptures in the Bible which prove that no unbeliever will enter the millennium. And therefore, this uh, doctrine says that the rapture has to be before the tribulation. So during the tribulations, other people will get converted to Christ and they will enter the millennium. And they are the ones who live during the millennium. I don't want to give an answer, just say yes or no, that's what I believe. I'm going to give a scripture, okay, because... Uh, yes, please. Uh, you cannot put the faith in man. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 5 says, Cursed be the man that trusts in man, blessed be the man that trusts in the Lord. I'll give you a chronology, right, because to understand who, who will enter the millennium, uh, you need to know, like, uh, you need to have an overall of the Bible prophecies, otherwise you have to make some guesses. In fact, that's how I feel about this certain doctrine, that it's just a guess. If it cannot be like that, it has to be like this, therefore, it's just no, like a guess. it's like uh, they draw this conclusion, these false uh, prophecies, uh, they are drawn by conclusions, by uh, like clues, appearances, yeah. uh, what appears like a semblance, uh, just by clues. You know, They say, because they cannot be this, because they cannot be that, therefore we think. But that's just uh, appearances. If you go to uh, John seven twenty four, Jesus said, Do not judge by appearances, mm -hmm. but judge a righteous judgment. Because if you judge by appearances, you're going to be deceived. Because God uh, specifically hides uh, the truth and the parables, uh, like it says in Matthew 13. So seeing, they see not. Hearing, they don't understand. Mm -hmm. So they, they don't get converted, they don't get healed. Why? Because the heart is hardened. So God hides the truth and the parable. And if you judge by appearance, Jesus seemed like a carpenter, appeared like a just normal guy. But there was God hiding under him. Understand? Amen. For example, I'll give you an example. Like if you go to Matthew sixteen eighteen, Jesus asks who people say I am. And Peter says they say you are a prophet, Jeremiah. And Jesus says, who do you think I am? So Peter says, you are the Christ. Yes. And so G then Jesus answered to Peter and said, you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. So by all appearances, uh, the church is built on Peter. All right. Doesn't, it look, doesn't it look like that? <laughs> there are uh, a big denomination that they, they think that. But that's impossible because uh, even Peter himself, uh, in the second chapter of his epistle, First Peter 2, verse, eight, verse 4 until 8, Peter says that the stone is Jesus. The foundation is Jesus Christ. They cannot be Peter. 
But yet, if you judge by appearance, in Matthew 16, the rock is Peter. That, that's what they mean. There are whole denominations, you believe, there. Yes. But all you have to do is just go read the very same epistle of Peter, and Peter himself said, no, I'm not. So, who will populate the millennium? Okay, let me give you, I'm going to give you a chronology, okay? Please open up uh, um, the chronology I gave you, okay, and please read it, okay? And this chronology <laughs> will take you a few minutes to read it. Brief and time chronology. Okay, but it took me 40 years to put it together. God the, bless you. This is just a section. My, my chronology is longer than this, okay? Mm -hmm. This is just a section so we can reach the new earth, right? I give you scripture at each point so that you can go, verify, double check, and triple check. Do you mind reading it, please? Yes. Now, this is a very brief chronology. You might want to write down the scriptures, dear brethren, so you can actually check with the Bible every point. Yes, it will take you a week to, to study this one. <laughs> but I give it, you, you can give it to them in again, just two, three minutes. Yes. First event, tribulation, the coming of the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, 666, etc. You find it in Matthew 24 from 8 to 22 and Revelation 13. Okay, I just put the main scriptures because I could put another 10 scriptures at each point, but I just try yes. to condense it, okay? Of course, before reaching the tribulation, and like I said before, there will be a financial crash, there will be, um, like this is in uh, Daniel uh, eleven twenty financial crash. Daniel eleven twenty one the rise of the Antichrist. Um, mm -hmm. Daniel nine twenty seven the um, sign of the covenant seven years the breaking of the covenant etc etc. Uh, and so uh, the break of the covenant brings us to the tribulation and that's where I start this particular chronology. Uh, second step. Second step after the, the tribulation is what happens. The rapture. You find it in Matthew 24, 29 till 31, Revelations 14, from 14 to 16. Number three, the wrath of God. Revelations chapter 15, 16, and etc. This happens on the earth while in heaven, after the rapture, takes place the marriage of the Lamb, Revelations 19, 7 to 9. After the wedding, Jesus, with his newly married bride, returns on earth to take vengeance on the beast, the Antichrist. In other words, uh, uh, Jesus is followed by angels on horses, which probably is his newly uh, wed bride. Yeah, he just married her. Okay, but for sure he comes back. Right. Number four, the battle of Armageddon, or called also the day of the Lord. Revelations 14, from 15 to 20, and Revelations 19, from 11 to 21. Joel chapter 2, Zechariah chapter 14, Ezekiel 38, and chapter 39. Number five, the beast, or the Antichrist, and the false prophet are thrown in hell, and the devil is imprisoned for a thousand years. You find that in Revelations 19.20 and Revelations 20 from 1 to 3. Then the millennium, point six. You find it in Revelations 20 from 4 to 6. At the end of it, Satan is freed. This is the point number seven. He deceives most of the millennial people, and surrounds the camp of the saints, those converted to Christ during the millennium. But God burns them up. Burns Revelations up. 20, 7 to 9. Yeah, God burns up all those people, uh, the devil's people surrounded the camp of the saints. Right. So at the end of the millennium, that is the burning of the earth, from Revelations 20, 7 and 9, this is point 8. The planet will be purified by fire. Revelations 20, verse 9, 2 Peter 3, 10 to 13. All pollution gone. Praise God. Point number nine. The devil cast in the lake of fire. Revelations 20, verse 10. Number 10. The white throne judgment. All who have not received the forgiveness of sins by receiving Jesus as their Savior will be judged at the white throne judgment by their works. Revelation 20, from 11 to 15. Okay, this is not the Christians, okay? The Christians are, will be judged at the uh, judgment seat of Christ, like it says in Romans 14, 10, and 2 Corinthians 5, 10. When? Uh, Revelation 20, verse 4. Uh, these are the, uh, immediately after the rapture. Okay. Okay, it's called, that's when the marriage uh, feast of the Lamb is. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, that's when the reward will be distributed, okay? To the Christians. To the Christians. So, after the white throne judgment, point 11, new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem, Revelation 21. New Jerusalem is clearly where the bride, the Christians, will live. New heaven is where the non-bride Christians will live. 
You find that in Galatians 5, verse 4, 2 Corinthians 6, 1, Matthew 7, 21 to 23, and Matthew 25, from 10 to 12. Okay, this scripture proves that not all Christians are the bride. Okay. Okay. Also Luke 21, 36, and Luke 9, 26. So New Heaven is the place where the non-bride Christians will live. Okay. And then New Earth... In other words, the, the Christians like Laodicea, etc., get Jesus going to spit them out. It's not realistic to think that they're going to live in the New, New Jerusalem, which uh, Revelation 21 says comes down as a bride. So that's the place of the bride. Like in, in 2 Corinthians 11, 2, Paul says... Uh, I want to present you as a, a chaste virgin unto Christ. In other words, there is a choice. That's why I get scripture like uh, Galatians 5 verse 4 say you have fallen from grace. You so, know, so, so these are Christians who did escape hell because they did receive Jesus as their yeah, Savior. Yeah, Just yeah. they didn't enter the New Jerusalem but as a bride. These are the, what I like to call the bench warmers. You know, they just they took the, just the minimum dispensable blood of Christ to be saved, but they will not give, they will just want to do good business. Take as much as possible from Jesus and give back as little as possible. They worship in the world, worship in money, bank accounts, they put in their family before God, they're working for the world before working for Christ, they're glorifying, uh, working for the glory of the world instead of the glory of God's world, the kingdom of the world, the pyramids, uh, Egypt instead of kingdom of God. They're more interested in bringing fruits uh, for their employer than fruits to God, so saved. Mm -hmm. These Christians, the majority, a lot of them are going to be spit out or vomited out. They're not offense. <laughs> just, that's just what he said, either Revelation chapter 3, um, verse 14. Mm -hmm. So this, take it as a loving warning, brethren, I beg you on my knees, don't be vomited out from Jesus, mm -hmm. by Jesus. Please, uh, Luke 9, 23, Mark 8, 34. Um, he that is ashamed of me, I be ashamed of him. Daniel 12, verse 2 and 3. Many shall be resurrected, many shall be raised, rapture, resurrection, to everlasting shame. Others to shine as stars. Amen. Amen. And then the new earth is the place where all those that will be saved from the dreadful white throne judgment will live. There will be whole nations that will live on the new earth and outside New Jerusalem. Revelations 21, 24. You know, like Jesus said in, Matthew, in Luke 22, uh, you, you have followed me in my tribulations and I have appointed unto you a kingdom as my father appointed unto me. So the ones who follow Jesus among us, they will be chosen by God's discernment who deserves and they shall, they're going to be kings on the earth. Like it says in Revelation 5 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Okay, some of us will be kings, queens, uh, uh, ruling whole nations. And the kings of the earth, these kings uh, coming from New Jerusalem who are ruling the earth uh, will keep reading. However, because all this living outside New Jerusalem had not been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, they will therefore be in need of the spiritual healing of the leaves of the tree of life, which the bride will administer to them from New Jerusalem, as it says in Revelation chapter 22. So those who are going to be worthy, they will be chosen by God to become part of the bride. Some of us are going to be kings. Can you open to Revelation 20 verse 4, please? Yes. And Revelation... Uh, yeah. Yeah, Revelation 20, verse 4. Can you read it? And so, uh, at the, as kings, uh, like it says in, uh, in Revelation 21, 24, 25, over there, it says, uh, the kings of the earth shall bring their glory into New Jerusalem. The glory, I believe, is going to be the soul saved uh, from outside the new earth. People are going to believe it like now. Like, they won't die anymore. Death shall be cast uh, in the lake of fire. There's no death anymore. Revelation 20, uh, the end. But they, they will believe it like now. In fact, uh, in Revelation 22, verse 14, it says there shall be hormongers, idolaters, etc. People who need their healing or the leaves of the tree of life, Revelation 22, 2, which uh, those among us, a part of the bride, will administer to them coming from New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, I read the... Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. 
And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, we're getting close to answer the question about the millennium now. But first I want to finish this point. Here we see them who are the victory over the Antichrist and Mark of the Beast sitting on thrones. Mm -hmm. What Revelation 3 9, please? Yes. It says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Okay, this message is given to the Church of Philadelphia, a church which uh, symbolizes the faithful Christians. The church that follows after the church of love this year is the ones who uh, are Christians going to be vomited out. And it says here, I will cause the false Jews, today you could call false Christians if you mm -hmm. want, to come and worship at your feet. I mean, this is shocking. Imagine some of us sitting on thrones with the, with the bench warmers Christians of today on their knees worshipping those who were faithful. All right? And that's exactly what we read in Revelation 20, verse 4, sitting on thrones, the bride of Christ. Let's go down, down to verse 21. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I am sat down with my father in his throne. Son, those faithful among us, uh, bro brother, be faithful, will sit on the throne with Jesus. Okay, is it, 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 that's not shocking. Yes. It's something God. that we can't even grasp. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we don't even feel worthy to, what can I say, wash the feet of Jesus, okay? Mm -hmm. And he says, you sit on my throne. That's something we cannot grasp. It's but true. that's what he says. It's true. So encourage one another with these words, brethren. Okay, now, uh, did you finish the chronology? Otherwise, we go yes. to the millennium. I finished. Now, we need to, I need to understand, from this chronology, how do we know who enters the millennium? Okay, from this chronology, look, uh, you can come and see too. Uh, point number four is the battle of Armageddon, the day of the Lord. Point number five is the beast and the Antichrist of the prophets thrown cast in hell, Revelation 19:20. And here, and then in, in chapter 20, verse 1 until 3, the devil is bound for a thousand years. And here, with the millennium begins. Okay, because uh, after Revelation 20, the first scripture, the devil is uh, bound in prison. Verse 4, the victors, the martyrs, the victorious by the Christ, who got the victory over the beast, the Antichrist, the Mark of the Beast, etc., sits on the throne and begin r ruling and reigning for a thousand years. Yes, ruling this over one? who? Uh, ruling over the people who live in the millennium. Now, we get, we get in there. <laughs> so, who is going to live in the millennium? Okay, well, you need to understand this chronology to know who is going to survive. Now, let's study a little bit about the, the Great Tribulations, all right? This will take us to the book of Daniel, all right? The tribulation is uh, two and a half years, three and a half years. Uh, Jesus comes back, is the rapture, and then it begins the wrath of God, and then uh, it's Armageddon. Yes. Understand? Now, let's go to Daniel. Okay. Okay. It's, I'm going to do slowly, but, you know, the thing is that I need to give scripture after scripture after scripture, and it takes time. Okay. Okay, go to Daniel, uh, go to... Chapter 12, 11 and 12. Can you read it? Yes. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he. Verse 12. Blessed is he that waits and comes to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Okay, so what are all these numbers here? See, if you don't understand these numbers, you don't understand who will live in the, in the millennium, believe it or not. Okay. Why? Well, I'll explain to you, because this is talking about the tribulation. Mm -hmm. See, in this chapter, uh, Daniel 12, yes. um, the first verse, uh, it talks about the great tribulation. Michael, the archangel, defending uh, the children of, the the children of God. Mm -hmm. It's the same uh, Michael, the archangel, who in Revelation 12, verse 7, there is war in heaven, and Michael stands up against the dragon and his angels. And then the devil is cast down from heaven. The, when the devil is cast down from heaven, okay, he will, uh, his spirit will completely possess uh, the, this politician who becomes the, the devil in the flesh, the Antichrist, and he starts a great tribulation, and he sits in the temple of God, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, claiming this God. Mm -hmm. Why? Why does he do that? Because he, now he's, he's Satan, the king of this world, you know, the God of this world. And so he's cast down from heaven where his the devil is worshipped as God in heaven by his demons. Now he's cast down from heaven by the archangel Ma Michael, 
Okay, and he's cast onto the earth. And he, on the earth, since he has all this power, basically because he does have power, he said, hey, wake up, I'm, the, I'm God, yeah, mm-hmm. worship me. And that's why he sits in the temple of God, newly built, mm-hmm. okay? So he's cast down onto the earth. He, he possesses the Antichrist, the beast completely. See, in Revelation 13, it says the dragon gives his power and great authority to the beast. The dragon gives power to the beast. In other words, the devil gives power to the Antichrist, okay? Yes. And then the, through the, the Antichrist in the flesh sits in the temple of God. And uh, uh, like it says in Revelation 13, they worship the beast and they worship the dragon. Revelation 13, they worship both. Because uh, the dragon gave you power. So through the beast uh, in the flesh, uh, they are actually worshiping the dragon. One is a demon, Antichrist, the other is the devil, Satan himself. Okay, so Daniel 12, 1, it says, There is war in heaven, Michael shall stand up, a great prince who stands for the children. The people, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since the beginning, since there was a nation, even to the same time. So like Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22, it says there shall be great tribulation like never before and never will be. Mm-hmm. You see, it's a parallel here. Yes. And at that time, you say, your people shall be delivered, everyone written in the book, the book of life. Yes. Okay, so deliver, and then what happens? Verse two: Many that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, many to everlasting life, and and another to everlasting shame and contempt. So here you see the virgin with oil, virgin without oil. Laodicea being vomited out, the Philadelphia being blessed. Yes. Many to everlasting life, other to everlasting shame. In other words, it's hardly considered life. So this is the rapture. This is the, this is both resurrection and rapture. Okay, and then in verse 3 you got the judgment, the blessing, the rewards given. Read the verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Okay, here, the one who shine as stars forever and ever are those who turn many to righteousness. Who's our righteousness? Jesus Christ. Amen. Translate this and say, they that turn lost souls to the salvation of Christ shall shine as stars. Jesus said in Luke 22, you are there, you followed me in my tribulations, in my difficulties, and I appointed unto you a kingdom like my father appointed unto me. So you see, Jesus, the king of kings, who are the kings, the faithful followers. So here you see the bench warm as the people of Sunday morning drop a little money in the, in the basket. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, and they sing hallelujah, hallelujah, but they will not raise a finger for God. They just sit uh, watching TV all week long, uh, watching politics and sports and uh, uh, eating and drinking. And they shall be taken away like the desert Noah. They, they, they pray, Lord God, uh, help Obama to solve the problems in North America. Help uh, the Prime Minister Cameron in England. Uh, so those guys are not going to preach the gospel for you. No. Those guys are probably, I don't know, maybe they already have the microchip, who knows. I mean, that, that would be like Jesus praying, Oh God, Father, I pray that the Emperor of Rome will solve the problem. I pray that the Pharisee will help. I, I pray that the Kingdom of Rome... Jesus wouldn't pray like that. You go preach the gospel. How do you win the Antichrist? By evangelizing wherever I am, to everything that moves. That's how I overcome the devil every day. Amen. Okay, so anyway, that's to explain Daniel 12, 1, okay? <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay, now we go down the line here. So we so, saw the Great Tribulation, we saw the Rapture. Right. So Great Tribulation, you, no, you didn't see the Tribulation and the Rapture. You saw the Tribulation and the Resurrections and the Rapture. Okay, yes. In the order. This is very important that you, you learn this order, okay? okay. So, uh, tribulation, resurrection, rapture, rewards, judgment, the judgment seat of Christ. Daniel 12, 3 is the judgment seat of Christ. The Revelation uh, 20, verse 4, sitting on thrones, shining as stars. You understand? And these are the rewards. Yeah, right. Tribulation, verse 1. Verse, verse 2 is the re- resurrection and implied rapture. How do we know rapture? Because we know by other scripture that the resurrection and rapture, they kind of together. We mm-hmm. know by other scripture, all right? Such as? Such as First um, Thessalonians 4, where it says, first, uh, the dead shall rise first, uh, and then uh, we which are alive. Uh, and then First Corinthians 15, uh, 51, uh, we know by Revelation 11, I say, we are a bunch, okay? Thank you. Okay. So, um, so where are we here? Okay, verse 6. Uh, can you read 6 and 7? Daniel 12, 6. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, 
How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that lives forever, that shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Attention, attention. First, uh, the holy people, the power of the holy people, which uh, then was called Jews, and now they are called Christians, it needs to be scattered. In other words, uh, defeated. So the holy people were not raptured. Overcome. What? So the holy people were not raptured. Were not raptured. Before, before the tribulation. Yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly. This is another demonstration that so they have to go through the tribulation. The power must be scattered, and afterwards, all these things shall be finished. Which all these things? The judgment, the resurrection, the rapture. So the holy people, the power of the holy people must be scattered, destroyed. Mm-hmm. There is no pre tribulation rapture. Yes. Verse 7, what do we see here? We see, we see the length of the tribulations. Time, time, time. It says uh, that the power of the Christian shall be, what is a Christian? Because the holy people, 2,500 years later, after this prophecy, which is today, is called Christians. The Jews are not God's people. Why? Because they have received Christ. The, the Jews are today, they are not God's people. They are not God's people because they, not, they don't believe in Christ. Simple. When they will receive Christ, yes, they, they can be Jews, but spiritual Jews. In other words, Christian Jews. God doesn't have two peoples, he has one people. So anyway, anyway I want to point out, Daniel 12, 7, is the length of the tribulation. Three, and a, uh, three times and a half. Uh, if you want to know how much, three times and a half. Or just go to Revelation 12, 6 and 14, and you can see in a parallel scripture, you don't need to go there, I'll just tell you. Yes. That uh, is uh, three times and a half are exactly 1,260 days, which is exactly 42 months. It says, Revelation mm-hmm. 13. And these things about scattering the power of the holy people is confirmed everywhere. Yes. In Revelation 13, the, the Antichrist received power 42 months, and the verse 7, he will overcome the saints. In Revelation 17, while the bride, the virgins with oil, the woman is protected, Revelation 12, 6 and 14. The rest, uh, who keep the commandments of God and of Christ, they are attacked by the dragon. He cannot attack the woman. So he was upset. He cannot get the woman. You know, God, they have a special place of refuge. Okay, God will tell you. He told the Joseph and Mary, go to Egypt. And they went to Egypt. He was in Egypt. An angel appeared. Joseph, yes, sir. Go back to Israel, for they are dead, those who wanted to kill the child. So he went back to, to, to Israel. So when he heard that Archelao was a, a in charge, he was scared, and he went to Nazareth. So in other words, the protection is in obedience, right? Yeah. It's not that it's Latin America or not. No, 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 please. They, they, they're not, you're welcome to come here. If you want to come here, we'll help you all, you, all we can. we give you fellowship. Uh, we can uh, worship the Lord together. We help you all we can if you come here, if you need to find a job or whatever, or if you want to full, be full-time missionary, we'll help you. Amen. You can be part of a fellowship if you so desire, but the Lord might lead you to go to the North Pole, to the South Pole, <laughs> to Africa. Be careful, Africa is uh, the Muslims are really trying to, 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 they give you trouble. Unless you get supernatural call to go to a place, don't go. Okay, unless you're supernatural, call to stay in Europe or America, don't stay, get out. Where, where you should go, that's an easy question. So get on your knees, God will tell you. Uh, that's, that's where my job ends and yours begins. <laughs> I can help you in everything. I can Amen. help you everything you don't know, but, but that, as far as where to go, that's your department. Thank you, okay, so in verse 7, we saw the length of the tribulation. Wonderful. And then uh, we go down. Now that we understood this, uh, I know it's a long story to get to the millennium, but otherwise, you go from one false prophet and to the other, from the pan to the fire. You need to base your faith on scripture, not a man. Cursed be the man that trusts in man. Cursed be the man that trusts in me. Amen. I don't trust myself. I, why should you trust myself? Amen. Okay? If, enough, if I don't give you scripture, don't believe. Amen. Okay, here, let me give you some scripture. So, uh, now that we understand that we are dealing and talking about the great tribulation, let's continue. Verse 11, read it again. Verse 11. And Daniel from, 12. Yes. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that makes desolate set up, 
There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Okay, so this is what he's talking here. That we are, we are dealing with uh, uh, the covenant here. Uh, one week, uh, done in 927, which are seven years. How do we know? Genesis 29, 27 says one week are seven years. You can go check. So in the middle of, uh, of the Daniel 9, 27, the middle of the scripture, yes. and in the middle of the seven years, bang, he breaks uh, the covenant and he stops the sacrifice and there shall be abomination. Continuation. Go to Daniel eleven thirty one, and he shall stop the daily sacrifice and place the abomination. So he says here, verse 11, and uh, from the uh, the time the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, the abomination set up shall be a thousand two hundred ninety days. Now we saw verse seven is a thousand two hundred sixty. How come there was, are thirty more? was time, times yeah. and a half. Yeah, I already told you that the translation to that you can find Daniel twelve six and fourteen. Revelation twelve. Uh, what did I say? Daniel. Oh, pardon. Uh, the translation of that you can, find, you can easily find in Revelation 12, 6 and 14, where it says that three times and a half are exactly 1,260 days, which is the same 42 months of Revelation 13, 5, or Revelation 11, chapter 11, verse 2 and 3. It says 1,260 days, and also says 42 months. Yes. A bunch of numbers. But I need to give you scripture confirmation, otherwise you're going to remain confused. So, the point is this. Verse uh, 11, it says, uh, The beginning, uh, beginning when the Antichrist stopped the daily sacrifice and sets abomination until the end, until the end of what? The end of what this chapter is talking about. What is it talking about? Verse 1, tribulation. Verse 2, resurrection and rapture. Verse 3, judgment of Christ and rewards. Uh, attention. Okay. This is the, the marriage of the Lamb, you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it adds 30 days. So, so it's, yeah, because uh, the Great Tribulation is 1,260, but here it says, 90. until the end shall be 1,290. Well, because it includes Daniel 12, 3, which, uh, which is the rewards. That's when the marriage uh, feast of the Lamb happens. After the rapture, verse 2, there is the rewards, which is automatically the marriage of the Lamb. You understand? All right, because the Tribulation is 1,260, then the rapture takes just a split second. Mm-hmm. And then there are 30 days added, which is the marriage, the marriage of the Lamb, lamb and the rewards. And the rewards, uh, okay. in the stand. Yes. So, and then what happens? Well, that's going to be a nice marriage, 30 days. It's going to be a lot of ice creams, a lot of <laughs> heavenly champagne, a lot of jumping around. The 30 days in heaven, while on earth, what happens after the rapture on earth? Come on, we read before Revelation 15. The wrath of God. The wrath of God. Amen. So while there are 30 days of marriage and bl a blast, a heavenly blast in heaven of uh, singing song to Jesus and dancing for Jesus and blessing the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. For 30 days, getting married with the Lamb, I receive, the kings will receive the kingdom, and etc., etc. And the Lord this year will go somewhere else because mm -hmm. they cannot enter the marriage chamber. Okay, what well, do we know that Matthew 25, 1 to 12, the virgin with that oil, they cannot enter in. So during the marriage feast of the Lamb, the Laodiceans, somewhere else. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so 30 days. So these 30 days, it gives the space of the wrath of God and the marriage of the Lamb in heaven. Because they're happening in the same time? At the same time. We know that by the next verse, by the next scripture. We'd like to read it. Verse 12. Blessed is he that waits and comes to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Oh, oh, oh yeah, another number. See, you never hear people talking about this except when they play the lottery or something. <laughs> you know, you're like, what well, well, the world is this? We have a, a thousand two sixty and three, three times and a half in verse seven. We have uh, that's a thousand two hundred sixty days. Then they become a thousand two nine. They become a thousand three hundred thirty five. Praise God. It actually is very simple. When you know the chronology which I gave you, I mean you gave them, you yes, read it, right? Yeah. What was the chronology? Well, the chronology was great tribulation, rapture, rapture um, and then, uh, uh, no, no, it's um, uh, the rapture, the wrath yes. you gave, and then Armageddon. Yes. Correct? Yes. So once you understand the chronology, then you understand also these numbers. Because this number gives you the length of that chronology. We know that the Great Tribulation is 1,260. There is a 30 days more. That can only be the wrath of God and the marriage in heaven. Because we know that after the, 
the wrath comes Armageddon. So it's very clear that the God has divided here, okay, the 1,000 to 60, tribulation, 30 days, the wrath and the marriage in heaven, 45 days, Armageddon. So this 45 days added until 1,000, so yeah, 1,305 and 30 days. From uh, 1,290, they added 45 days, 45 which, days Armageddon. which is going to be such a long battle of 45 it, days. That's, uh, God wants to enjoy killing those guys one by one. You and can see that in Joel chapter 2 and, and Ezekiel 38 and 39, Armageddon. And why does it say, blessed is he that waits until at the end of Armageddon? Because... I mean, all the ones who are blessed were raptured. Those who are left are not blessed. <laughs> and here we finally answer the question, who will populate the millennium? You who? understand? <laughs> these <laughs> guys. These guys. All right? These guys that... Uh, but why are they blessed? They, they are, are blessed, blessed because they, God is telling them, hold on, hold on, hold on. You saw the rapture. You saw the wrath of God on earth. Just hold on and wait don't take yet. Don't take the mark of the beast. They didn't take it already. No, because there are people on earth that will not take the mark of the beast without being Christians, just for political reason. Uh -huh. Like in the days of Jesus, they they were not they were not all in favor of the Pharisees and the Romans. They were the zealots who were against everybody. Mm -hmm. They the you know. Uh, Zealous who wanted to overcome Rome with a, with a sword. Today you go on the internet, YouTube, uh, you find people, uh, the anonymous group, and then there are the anti-NWOs, anti-this and anti-that, anti-New World Order. Uh, yes, you know, and they're not Christian. Alex Jones, is, well, uh, Alex Jones is a Christian. Uh, there are people who want to fight politically. Mm -hmm. They're in America. They they they're fighting against the, the law that wants to stop the weapons because they want the weapons to to shoot to the Antichrist, the mark of the beast. Well, they, that's another way they're going to overcome that. They will not. So there might be a lot of people who will not uh, take uh, uh, the mark of the beast. For example, in Israel, they will not take the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? How no. do you know that? In Revelation 11. After the three and a half, year, three and a half year tribulations, there is a great earthquake. Seven thousand will die, and the remnant will give glory to God. Okay, you follow. So that means that those guys, the remnant, they will not take the mark of the beast. Revelation eleven, you have a three and a half years of tribulation. Okay, mm -hmm. the beast heals the two prophets. Yes, Revelation sir. eleven seven, they are dead. So uh, then there is a resurrection, verse 11, 12, the resurrect. And in verse 15, in verse 14, 15, 16 over there, there is a, an earthquake which kills 7,000. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the remnant gives glory to God. They couldn't give glory to God if they had the mark of the beast. So I expect the nation of Israel not to take the mark of the beast, at least, at least in the majority. You can also verify this in Zechariah 12 and 14, how the Israel will turn to Jesus, will turn to Christ, will convert to Christ after they see the rapture. Mm -hmm. So conclusion, the millennium will be populated by people who survived Armageddon, who didn't receive the mark of the beast and were not Christians either. Exactly. Because you see, there is a tribulation, 1260 days, there is a rapture, okay, and then there is a, the, the real left behind, uh, contrary to what uh, Tim Lehigh is talking about uh, the, you know, Left Behind. It's a wonderful movie, well but done, but uh, Dutch <laughs> is absolutely wrong. Uh, the, the real Left Behind are going to be after the tribulation, but they're not going to be... Um, there will be people who, who, who never receive Jesus Christ. They'll be left behind. And so to them, God is saying, Blessed is he who waits. Now, at the rapture, it says that every eye shall see him. You don't think these people who don't have the mark of the beast will get converted when they see the rapture and that they are left behind? Maybe yes. So they will just continue surviving yeah. in the millennium, right? Yeah, maybe. God will have his people after the rapture here. People, people are not born yet. People are not converted yet. People will get converted during the millennium. People will get converted during the wrath. Mm -hmm. You know, during the wrath of God, where he says that uh, it's against the people of the mark of the beast, the Revelation 16, eh? Revelation 16, 1 and 2, the, the vials of wrath falls upon the people with the mark of the beast, but they don't all have the mark of the beast. I would like to give you some scriptures which say that um, no non-Christians will enter the millennium. So you can explain them to me. Okay. Such as Who gives the scripture? different Christians that write books that interpret the rapture to be before the tribulation, and therefore they say that this millennium proves it. 
Okay, attention when you read books, okay? Because today, most of the books are false. Mm -hmm. Most of the books are written by false prophets. Just because they speak a high intellectual language, I did not yell and scream like I do, it doesn't mean they're right, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm more like uh, a little bit like John the Baptist. I get upset. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, sorry, I'm not a very polite guy. Actually, somebody called you John the Baptist of year 2000. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to be a little disciple. So, uh, just because a book has a nice hardcover, nice color, and they make videos so nice and perfectly, which I wish you I had a crew here to make video like this for me, uh, here the, the work is, uh, the harvest is plenty, there was a few. Okay. So, there are lots of scriptures given in this kind of books, but I want to just quote some of them. Okay, go ahead. Such as, um, so they say, no one believer will enter the millennium. Okay, because Such why? Such as, Psalm 2.12. That's ridiculous, who's going to be in the millennium? Can anywhere read Psalm 2. Already, already beginning, uh, already, or, or, already, <laughs> already I smell of, uh, in a read, read, read. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and he perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. So what does that go to do? Nothing. <laughs> I don't know. That's ridiculous. Next. <laughs> is it is this guy like the Jewinas? They quote quote scripture, but they don't even know what they're quoting because I I I usually tell Jewinas, can I see your Bible for a minute? They say, why? I just want to read the scripture from your Bible. Since my Bible quotes is wrong, can I read it from yours? And I tell you, I I got the pleasant surprise reading the Jewinas Bible years ago to find to discover that they, 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 those guys they didn't change that much. They only doctored a few, but with their own Bible, I just showed that they're they're false. So they usually, you know. Malachi 4.1. So if you if you analyze the scripture that these false prophets are giving you, you see that they always stick in the foot in the mouth. You can show by their own scripture that they are wrong. Go ahead, read. Malachi 4.1. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. And it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So they, they use this uh, to prove... Uh, that no one believer enters the millennium. That this is... No, where does it say millennium, first of all? Well, it doesn't say the word millennium. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, at this point, you can say that Jesus was a Hindu, like those guys are saying that Jesus went in India to learn from the gurus. But that's why you have all these false... Uh, all these sects and denominations. Because people... They, they read a verse which means nothing, and they will interpret that means the opposite. So what does this, mean? this is not about the millennium, first of all, because it doesn't say. Second of all, because it says that the days of the Lord comes like a, what do you say? Hot as Behold, a heaven. The day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud and the wicked shall be stubble, and the day comes that they shall burn them up. Go to Revelation 20. Okay, this is, this is not talking about the millennium. It's talking after the millennium, the scripture. Mm -hmm. And they just misapplying. Can you please read it? Okay. Look, it's that Revelation 20 from 7 until 10. And it gives you exact chronology when the earth burns. Read it. From 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Is that before or after the millennium? After. Okay, keep reading. Okay, D don't forget. Okay? Yeah, obviously after. Okay. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is at the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. More? Okay, that's it. Then, then it talks about the weather of judgment. Yes. Okay, then in Revelation 21, verse 1, what does it say? And I saw? Um, one second. And I saw a new heaven and new earth. Okay, that's it. So you understand what he's saying here? The, new, the first heaven and the first earth were passed you away. Understand? So it's going to happen that after the millennium, after... Two thousand years, yeah? Exactly. After the millennium, the earth burns. So it's not before. So it, so it burns and there is a new heaven and a new earth. Okay. And that's it. So it cannot be... It, it cannot be, what, was it, the, the, what did you read before? Malachi, Malachi 4 1. Okay, read again. See, this For behold, a day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that comes shall burn them up. Okay, go back to Revelation 20. Okay. So, this is talking after the millennium. Uh, yes. Read the verse 7 again. And when the thousand years are expired. Okay, stop. The fire comes down. Fire it, nine, comes ten? down, it keeps going until verse 9 at the end. Fire came down oh, from God out of heaven. Uh, 
and devour them. After the millennium, no, go back to Revelation 20. Yes. After the millennium, the okay. fire comes down, and then what happens? Uh, 11. And I see. Go back. Go down. And, uh, and I saw 12. The, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Okay. And then uh, 15? 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay. This is the judgment, verse 11, of the white throne judgment. Okay. So you understand? So after the fire comes down, go back to Malachi, please. Four, yes. One. Read it again. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven. Okay, that's it. So this is fulfilled <laughs> exactly the opposite. After the millennium, when they all be dead, all burned, and their souls, okay, the soul of these people keep will go in front of the weather of judgment to be judged by by God and whoever is not found. The book of life shall be thrown in the lake of fire in the sun. Mm, yes. So this again false prophets in action. Okay, one more so question. they can deceive the people who are ignorant of the Bible. These guys are either de deceivers one hundred percent or they are deceived and deceiving. And the poor ignorant uh, Christians who know the television more than God, who study the TV program more than the Bible who are there like sitting in front uh, of the TV every day, they, they're ignorant, not ignorant because they're stupid, no, ignorant because they're disobedient. The, 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 the lamp is not without oil because they don't want to put the oil. It's cheaper to toss a little man in the basket Sunday morning so they can watch TV all day long or all week long, so they can make money all week long, so they can buy new cars, new houses, and, the, and, the, and, and, and then they go listen to false prophets and the money who tells them that they are the people, they are the great denominations, they are under grace. They have to do nothing for God because they have a covenant with God. You understand? And this is love this year. One more scripture. Uh, so thank God for the few Christians today who get out of the cemetery building, go and reach the lost, go and preach the gospel. There are not very many, but there are. Thank God for the, for the bread of Christ today. Uh, who is the bread of Christ? By the fruits you shall know. A bride is supposed to get pregnant and give babies. So you're not the bride of Christ if you don't produce fruits, if you don't produce babies, spiritual babies. What is that? Soul saved. Okay, turn many to righteousness. Then you'll shine as stars forever. Amen. I want to just quote one more scripture, even though they give many. Second Thessalonians 1, 7 and 8 and Second Thessalonians 2, 12. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This is what? Second Thessalonians what? 1 and chapter 2. Chapter 2. So This is another scripture that... To prove what? Proves that the unbelievers don't enter the millennium. Okay, uh, and it says what? When the Lord Jesus will shall reveal from heaven this mighty angel, flaming fire, they can bang us. Okay, uh, all right. So, it, but it doesn't say that they, they all die. It just says that the, it will, this is talking about Armageddon. This is talking about the destruction of the Antichrist and his followers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that it will be, it will be an hecatomb, everybody dead, there will not be the survive on the planet. Yes. It doesn't, it doesn't say that. Well, it doesn't say millennium for sure. It doesn't. Well, yeah, this happens before the millennium because it's talking about when Jesus comes back. This is Armageddon. Yeah, it, it is before the millennium. Okay. But it doesn't say that, that, they, that they all die. It said they all might be damned to believe not the truth. Okay, definitely. They, these are the ones who, in, in that time, who will receive the mark of the beast. Eh? Okay, but, this, <laughs> but not all are going to receive the mark of the beast. That's why it says uh, in Daniel 12, Blessed is he that waits and comes to the 1335. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they still, they were not raptured. They were not raptured. Um, they were left behind, all right? And so they'd be tempted to get the mark of the beast. He said, those guys got raptured, so there is no hope for us. Uh, here is the mark of the beast. Uh, I guess maybe we should take it. God says, Blessed is he that waits. How long? 1,335. Why? Because uh, after that, uh, that's at the end of Armageddon and the beginning of the millennium. Because they'll be entering the millennium. You can see that in Zechariah. Okay, you want to go to Zechariah? Okay. It's a beautiful scripture, Zechariah. Okay. You, need to, you need to find it. Zechariah. It's uh, the end of the Old Testament. 
Zechariah 14. Eh? Yes. Okay. So, let's see verse 9. Read verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Okay. And then uh, verse 11. And man shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Okay, now, well, I'm getting, getting closer. Okay, now verse 12, it talks about Armageddon. Okay. See, verse 1 is the day of the Lord, okay? Behold, the day of the Lord comes. Mm -hmm. All right, it says, uh, uh, verse 2, I will gather all nations against Jerusalem. Yes. See, right now, yes. Israel is surrounded only by enemies. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is already getting fulfilled, another sign of the time. Okay, so verse uh, 12, what happened to the nations that will invade the Israel? Because Israel shall be invaded. You can see that in Ezekiel 38 and 39, Israel shall be invaded. What will happen to this nation that will invade Israel? Zechariah 14, 12, attention. It's getting very interesting here. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that had fought against Jerusalem. The flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. In other words, uh, Jesus is going to come with a horse from heaven, followed by the angels, probably the bride, and there you will send fire over Gog and Magog, the Antichrist, and the Mark of the Beast followers. Mm -hmm. All right, you can see that in Joel chapter 2, uh, Ezekiel 38 39. All right, and he will destroy with the armies of the Antichrist. It doesn't say we'll kill everybody on the planet. It just destroyed the mark of the beast. Not even all. Just the soldier, the armies. But with these armies, the nation, the nation where these armies are coming from, Europe, etc., the Muslim country, and it's not going to kill everybody. That will be mark of the beast, the people who will still survive. They will enter the millennium. They will have children. And maybe the children, they will be, they, be, they get converted. Understand? Just like today, uh, there are Christians whose parents don't believe. Yes. Okay, read also, please. Uh, and here, maybe we'll answer the question, who will populate the millennium? Verse uh, 16. Zechariah 14, 16. It's probably the most important scripture to tell that tells us who will populate the millennium. Okay. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Okay, so very clear. I mean, this is pretty so clear. these are people who actually fought against Jerusalem and they survived and they're supposed every year to go worship the Lord. Yeah, it's, it says everyone that is left uh, yeah. of all the nations yes. which came against Jerusalem, it's clear. Who, who were not killed, in verse 12, who flesh did not consume oh, yeah. away, the eyes uh, consume away, etc. These are the nations left. In other words, the soldiers, uh, the, 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 the armies of the beast, they shall be destroyed completely in the, in the valley of Armageddon, that's the northern of Israel, okay? Mm -hmm. But the nations where these soldiers came from, they're going to get, they're really going, going to get busted, uh, yeah. but they will, but some of them will survive, and, the, and then after that, it's talking about after Armageddon here, that's clearly the millennium, they will have to come from year to year to worship in Jerusalem, and if they don't come, they shall be cursed that the Lord will with, withhold the rain. It will not rain, in the, there will be uh, drought, in this time, they'll be cursed. Now, uh, that's the millennium. Now in verse 12, it says that all the people, all that fought against Jerusalem, this plague will be upon them. But then... In, in what, what scripture? 12. So read it. Exactly what it says. It says the law will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem with the plague, that the flesh shall consume away. Okay. But then, I understood finally, in verse 16 it says, them that are left of those nations... So people who came who, against Jerusalem. Exactly. So people who were living in their country. Right. Where the soldiers, the Antichrist soldiers came from. Right, right, right. The Mark of the Beast people came from like Europe, Russia, the Muslim country, China, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the women, the children, the, the, the old guys, the, the politicians. 
whoever is left so this nature did not get destroyed uh, in the valley of uh, Jezreel which is called Armageddon north, north of Jerusalem north of Jerusalem uh, they will they will survive some of them nevertheless they have to come every year and worship the king okay with the king Jesus if they don't come they shall be cursed God will not send rain yes. so in the millennium it will be like now, exactly like now. There will be people who will not go, will not go worship in Jerusalem. They will rebel. That's why at the end of the millennium, when the devil is set free, Revelation 20, verse 7, he will go around the whole planet and uh, he will gather all the rebellious anti-God the people. They, the, the number is like the sand of the sea and they will surround the camp of the saints, Revelation 20. What's the camp of the saints? Well, first of all, it says here they have to come every year to worship in Jerusalem. The camp of the saints is going to be Jerusalem, okay? And who's going to believe in the camp of the saints? The people who during the millennium will get converted to Christ, just like now. Amen. Otherwise, what's, what's the purpose of having a wasting a thousand years? <laughs> but nevertheless, it also shows that during the millennium, most people will reject. Most people will not get converted. Most people will still follow the devil as soon as he's set free. Why most people? Because he says the number is like the sand of the sea. and will oh, surround okay. the camp of the saints. Okay. So there will be just very few, basically. It's going to be just Jerusalem and Israel around there. And the whole world is it's going to be exactly the same. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The next point. Could they be people saved after the rapture? Pre-tribulationists have a simple solution for the problem. By putting the rapture before the tribulation, this allows a new group of believers to spring up who will populate the millennium. Well, since we know by all kinds of scripture that the rapture is after the tribulations, it's clear that the people who get saved after the rapture, which they will be, yes. blessed that they wait, uh, yes. etc. Uh, this would just simply enter the millennium. They will be living then uh, into the millennium, just like the saved people are living now into this world. Amen. Then the next point. When is the wedding? Because there is a certain verse which uh, kind of gives the impression that there is a, a rapture before the tribulation, they say, because it's uh, Luke 12, 36, which says, you yourself like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open unto him immediately. So if you read it carefully, it says he returns from the wedding and people are waiting. So what does that say? They say that if the wedding occurred before his return, then the rapture also occurred before his return because a prior wedding necessitates a prior coming. So they say it's very simple. They say, if this one verse does not set up a chronology, then my Bible is written in riddles instead of plain words. Well, if his Bible of this guy is not written in riddles and parables and mystery, he has their own Bible. Because, <laughs> uh, because uh, sorry, but uh, sir, I don't know who you are, but listen, um, uh, Bible is full of parables. Matthew 13 it says that, uh, the disciple asked, why do you speak to them in parable? They already don't understand. You speak in parable. We hardly understand. And uh, those guys, are, they have no... And Jesus answers it because they see and they will not see. Here and they will not understand. And purposely, God blinds the minds of the devil's people who refuse Christ. The moment people don't receive Jesus, God doesn't owe them anything. Mm -hmm. That's why in the Second Thess in Second Thessalonians 2, it says he even sends a strong delusion that they might believe a, a lie and be condemned, judged. So of course it's written in riddle. Look at the book of Revelations. <laughs> My goodness, do you think, is that plain for you? I mean, it, it took me many, many years to understand the book of Revelation. Now I understand it, praise yes, God. Now it's an open book, and now it's plain for me. But that took me many years. So the question is, if the rapture happens at the end of the tribulation, there is nobody left who will be waiting. And then how do you explain Luke twelve thirty six? And why will be nobody left? Because they say that the rapture happens they're, and right after Armageddon. Yeah. No, the rapture happens, Armageddon right then in the same it coming. kills everybody. And there's nobody left waiting. So all the bad are killed, all the good are raptured. Yes. And that's ridiculous. <laughs> no, no, of course not. You, I mean, of course we read in Zechariah 14, it's not like that. See, again, these are people that just go by appearances. They say, it looks... Uh, Two and two, twenty-two. Uh, three, three plus three is thirty-three. You know, they just go by appearances, these guys. 
No, it's just... Uh, How do you explain Luke 12, 36? B- uh, it says, be like uh, him that waits for the Lord that comes from a wedding. Yeah. This, uh, this is exactly what we said. Uh, read again. It doesn't say be like Read him. again the little, the little line. It says, you yourself, like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. Mm. That when he comes, they may open unto him immediately. Yeah, of course, of course. But this is exactly what it says in Daniel 12. Yes. It says, blessed is he that waits until 1,335. In the sun, after the rapture, tribulation, the rapture. And so people see, oh, oh, we're left behind. Okay? So, we left behind with the oh, as well worship the Antichrist, take the mark of the beast. He says, no! Say, be like the servants who wait for the Lord who comes back from the wedding. Actually, that's another demonstration, thank you very much, that it shows that the, the, the right chronology, tribulation, the rapture, the wrath of God on earth, marriage in heaven, return at Armageddon, blessed is he who waits until the end of Armageddon, 1335. Next. Amen. That's clear. The next point is Revelation 19, 7 and 8, which talks about the marriage of the Lamb, and the wife has made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. Now they say, because it's in the past, the wife has made herself ready, and she was arrayed in fine linen, therefore this cannot happen after the tribulation, it was before the rapture, was before, so she can prepare in the past for the wedding. Because in Revelations 19, when the wedding happens, in the same coming, Jesus also does Armageddon. So there is no more time for preparations. They say. Yeah. You're wrong. Uh, because they see they're mixing things up. Therefore, they're putting the rapture and Armageddon at the same time. Because they don't understand that there is a space in between. They don't understand that by the, t- the 1,335 days. Yes. That there is a 30 days and there is 45 days. They don't understand that. So they just make a big soup. Yes. In reality, and it's true, it doesn't make sense like that. In, re- in reality, in reality, it's not like that. When Jesus comes back, every eye will see him, so there yes. is no secret rapture. Every eye will see him. Revelation 1 7, every eyes will see him. Okay, and uh, it, no, 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 absolutely. Uh, this is absolutely, there is no scripture to prove this uh, opinion. No, it is. she makes herself ready because she's the, she, she is the, the wise virgins with oil. She prepared the oil and therefore she made herself ready with the oil, okay? And she entered the marriage chamber and she got married because the white linen is the righteous works of the saints, uh, in, w- which you do when? You do when you prepare your oil. When did you prepare? During your life. Uh, you prepare every day by going witnessing, evangelizing, reaching the lost, uh, sacrifice your life, your house, your money, all to Christ. That's the oil. Amen. The righteous, the white linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. Uh, Revelation uh, 19, uh, 7 to 9. Amen. That's it. So the right progression is that after the rapture, there is the wedding in heaven, which the scripture they give. Yeah, right. But, that, right but that lasts 30 days. 30 days. And that afterwards, Jesus come back with the hosts of heaven dressed up in white. With wife, the bride. With the bride for yeah. Armageddon. Yes, okay. exactly. That's clear. Exactly. They go in heaven, marriage, 30 days. And then, you know, in Revelation, uh, Revelation 19, from 7 until 21, it has a, this progression. One, marriage in heaven. Okay, as soon after the marriage, verse 11, heavens opens, a white horse, Jesus jumps out, and followed by uh, the army of heaven. Who's that? The bride. <laughs> Who's going to take? He's going to put that bride uh, where? In all folks' homes, they can go, he can come without this ear. Of course, that's going to be the bride. But whoever it is, it happens after the marriage. So the progression is tribulation, rapture, marriage, Armageddon. Amen. Very, very, very simple. And, and the fact that uh, it's using the past tense, the wife has made herself ready, that refers to our time now. Now. Now we are getting ready. But where did these guys put it? Well, they're saying that the, the rapture was before the tribulation, and therefore she had time to make herself ready with white linen. Where? In before, heaven? Right. In Hebrew 9, 20, 27, it says, It is given unto, man's, unto men once to die, and after that, the judgment. Don't even think... Uh, that you can disobey Jesus in this life, then you go to heaven and get ready. But thank you very much. That's very easy. You to live for the devil now, and in heaven I get ready. No, my dear. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The next point is Revelation 4. The next point in proving the pre-tribulation rapture. Revelation 4, one says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, 
and the first voice which I heard was as if were a trumpet talking with me, which says, come up hither and I will show you things which must be hereafter. Now they say um, that here we see the beginning of the Great Tribulation and the rapture before the Tribulation. Well, you must have a special binoculars to see that. They say the heavens open only for his coming, therefore it says a door was open in heaven, that means it's his coming, and that's the rapture. And then it says, I will show you things which must be hereafter, which is the Great Tribulation. And also, Who says all these things? Well, the that's, actual tribulation. <laughs> that's, that's the way they interpret that's it. That's ridiculous. That's like saying uh, that means that Buddha was in heaven. Uh, I mean, this is just... Well, uh, right after this scripture in Revelation 4.1, the same chapter, afterwards there are, there are uh, 24 elders who cast their crowns at the feet of Christ. Therefore, the elders are in heaven. Why? Because they were raptured in the first <laughs> verse. Oh, the, the, those 24 elders were, uh, elders were raptured. Well, that's one interpretation. Uh, the, so, those 24 elders were raptured. Yeah. Uh, they cannot be Abraham, David, uh, Isaac. Uh, they cannot be no, none of those guys. Well, of course they can. It cannot be Peter, Paul. Uh, <laughs> it cannot be the, yes. the Paul. So no, it cannot be that. They have to be raptured just at the last minute, right? Listen, this, we don't need, listen, when things are senseless, we don't even need to waste time, okay? When something okay. is scriptureless, you don't need to waste time. Okay? The, the next question, there is somebody who wrote in his book, Why does Revelation 13, 9, contrary to expectation, contrary to the consistent pattern, addresses individuals instead of churches? Revelation what? 13, 9. 13, 9. Uh, it says, If any man have a year, let him hear. So, so what? Um, I don't know. I don't understand what they're trying to say. But this is a question they put. Okay. But this is... Uh, okay, go to the next. It's, it, it, a lot of this question that you're worth answering. Next. <laughs> Why does God deal in a special way with the 144,000 Israelites, something that he does not do during his church age? Which special way? I don't know. Okay, go to the next. So, just go to the most important. No, I don't see the connection with the rapture. Yeah, just don't, don't just ignore uh, some of these things. Just a time, a waste of time. Go. How go. can the harvest of Revelation 14 from 14 to 16 be the rapture when Joel explains it to be the harvest of the wicked? Joel 2 from 1 to 11. Uh, no, uh, it's wrong because uh, Joel it only deals with uh, with one, which is. Uh, is the day of the Lord and the destruction of the wicked. And the Revelation 14, uh, uh, maybe this guy should study a little bit better. Revelation 14 it deals with two different uh, events, two different harvests. One, the first one is done by the Son of Man uh, on a cloud, which mm -hmm. is like Jesus said, the, the, the rapture of Matthew 24, 29, Jesus comes with the clouds. So that's the Son of Man with a sickle definitely represents uh, the Son of Man, Jesus, and that's the rapture. Then there is a second event. See, he's, he's putting these two events into one, Joel. But in reality, in Revelation 14, the two events are completely separate. The second event, it's an angel that uh, he gathers the clusters of the earth uh, and he puts them in the wine press of the wrath of God. So the first uh, is uh, an harvest ma uh, made by the Son of Man, which is clearly Jesus, and that's it. The second separation it's made, uh, it's made in a way that they are thrown, cast uh, in the wine press uh, of the wrath of God uh, where blood comes out. That's Armageddon. Yes. Okay? So it's very clearly. And you, and you can see the progression, by the way. If this, if this guy is a this false prophet who studied the Bible a little better instead of just interpreting it, they will discover that Revelation 14 has... Um, is, first, you show the, the, the tribulation, the mark of the beast, uh, and you, people are cast in hell if they receive the mark. After that is the rapture, the Son of Man, and after that is Armageddon, which again is the correct progression. Next. Amen. Now, Revelation 14, which we just talked about the two harvests, the pre-tribulation is... So, is this another question? Yes. Uh, guys, it's huh? connected to the Revelation 14. But this is from the somebody wrote? Yes, the pre-tribulation is claimed this. So another, another, another one of these teachers. Another one, but connected to the same teaching you just gave us about yeah. the reapings. Yeah. Okay. No, I just need to know this is another, another, another book or something. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. 
So there are the two harvests we see in Revelations 14. The first reaping is allowed to the second Armageddon. It's clear. They, they are not making it so clear. They, no, they, they are comparing it. it with the Matthew 13, with the parable of the tares and the good seeds, where it shows that first is the gathering of the tares to be burned, and then the gathering of the, of the good seed, of the wheat. Yeah. So they say, therefore, Matthew 13, the parable, and Revelation 14, it doesn't go together. Because Revelation 14, first is the rapture, in other words, the good seed, and then the tears, the Armageddon. So because it doesn't go together, they say in, Matthew, in what uh, the way to interpret Revelation 14 is that the first reaping is not the rapture, is the judgment. And the second reaping is Armageddon. Yeah, okay, but you, you cannot do that. You cannot just connect scripture the way you want eh? You cannot take something from Genesis and connect it to Revelations. You see, it's a way of the false prophets to take things out of context. Okay? Because uh, you can connect uh, Psalm 14 uh, and uh, says uh, the, there is no God, it says. And then connect it uh, to, to something else and it turns out uh, there is no God. So you, you be careful about your connection because you might get, come up with... Uh, creating some kind of a Frankenstein monster, you know, instead of a, instead of a, of a ha an arm, you, you have a leg, uh, instead of a foot, uh, you have your head. It's like, uh, <laughs> you, I mean, it's like uh, some of these teachers, the, the way they teach, they're like Picasso paintings, you understand? Yeah. You see a guy with a, an eye instead of an ear, a mouth instead of the nose. Uh, this, the, the, some of these teachers are building monstrosities, you know, and the poor ignorant Christians who watch TV more than the Bible, they don't know the difference. Just because they speak, they went to university, they learned how to speak uh, intellectual, and they, they just go to the Greek, analyze, uh, split, uh, chop a couple of words up and down. That's what the Jewish witnesses did. You know, they go into the Greek, uh, one word, uh, it has a seven or eight different interpretation, they pick whatever they like. So it turns out that Jesus is not God anymore, you understand? So you have so, to be careful with these false prophets, okay? So then how do you explain that the chronology is the opposite from Matthew 13 and Revelation 14? Well, you need to have, a, first of all, an overall idea of the end-time prophecy, which means you need to study the Bible. It's okay to learn from a little better from everybody when it comes to the kindergarten. But once you know the basic principle of cooking, then you need to be able to make your own uh, recipes when it comes to cooking, you understand? Yes. You cannot always follow, because otherwise the, the disciple will never excel the teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, if, you, if your teacher happens to be a blind, he does a blind, you're just going to be a blind forever. So there is a time when you need to get out of kindergarten and you need to detach from the religions and connect to the Holy Spirit. Like it says in First John uh, chapter 2, verse 20 and 27, it says you have the Holy Spirit, you don't need anybody to teach you. So in other words, it's okay if you go to the Jehovah Witness, if you happen. But there must come a time when you detach from these guys and you follow the Holy Spirit. Uh, you, 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 just, uh, you just follow the scriptures under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. They must go together. You understand? Here in Matthew 13, and about the tears, it, it, it cannot connect it to just uh, like this, to Revelation. Because you see, certain things are in uh, uh, progression. Other, uh, some things are in chronology. Other things are not. Like if you read the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and chapter 2, they're not in chronology. You understand? And uh, uh, so it's in chapter one, it talks about God created male and female, yes. but the woman was not created yet. The woman was created in the next chapter. So it's not everything is, chron is in chronology. So you have to, you have to see by the overall, it, like the Bible must go, with, with, must click with everything else. You cannot take a scripture from Matthew 13 connected to Revelation 14. I know that, 13 and 14, but they are two different <laughs> books. <Yes. laughs> okay, anyway, I'll answer your question now. Let's analyze, let's go to Matthew 13, will you? Okay. You want to open there? Yes. I'll give you some scripture, okay. Okay, read the, uh, let's read from 41 until 43. 41? Yeah, Matthew 13, 41 to 43. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, so this is not a chronology uh, according to the book of Revelation, according to 
to what the Bible prophets are really teaching. This is, this is a wrong chronology here. Why? Because Jesus was not teaching about chronology. Mm -hmm. okay, he was teaching about, uh, the, those guys ask a question, say, Lord, can we go and extirpate the tares? Yeah. So later, it must be later necessarily, when the harvest comes, the wheat will be free. The Lord says, no. I know it's good to go and get the tear real quick. And like people say, what well, doesn't God just send the, de the devil to hell, kill all the bad people, and we, the good people, yeah, like can... Uh, no, you, have to, you cannot do that. Because if you still pay, uh, if you send a guy to hell now because he's a bad guy, then uh, the, uh, this guy tomorrow is going to have a son who's going to be good seed. Then you, you're going to kill uh, the bad guy, the criminal, the, the demon-possessed guy, the mark of the beast now. But then his son is going to be a good guy. So let him live through the millennium. Let him live the bad guy because tomorrow he's going to have a good guy. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay. So this so, uh, parable doesn't apply because he's it, teaching completely different. It doesn't apply because Jesus was not teaching chronology here. He was teaching something else. He was saying, don't touch the tear because if you kill the tears, you will also hurt the descendants of oh, yeah. the tares, which tomorrow will be good seeds. That's what it, this is the teaching. Do, do you want to? Shall we look at the, a little bit of the chronology? This here? okay. Okay, Matthew thirteen. Go yes. back to Matthew. It, it, so in verse forty-one, what do we see? The angels come and uh, gather uh, out of his kingdom the things that offend the tares. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Then next, that's number one. Okay. Yes. Next, number two. And he shall cast them away in the furnace of fire. fire. That's the second step, okay? According to this chronology, which is not in chronology. Okay. But let's pretend it's in chronology. 41, collection of the tears. 42, burning of the tears. Yes. 43, read 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun That's in the it. kingdom of the Father. The distillery says then. Uh -huh. So if you follow this chronology, the righteous shall shine after the tears is in the furnace of fire. That's the wrong chronology. Because the righteous is going to be collected during the rapture before the millennium. Mm -hmm. But the tears are going to be burned after the millennium. Mm -hmm. Revelation 20, verse uh, uh, 11 to 15. Only after the millennium, Revelation 20, from 7 until 15, after the millennium, Satan is set free, and then the fire from heaven, okay, kills those guys, and then there is a judgment, and only after the judgment, in Revelation uh, 20, 15, the last scripture of the chapter, they are sent to the lake of fire. Um, okay. So there is a thousand year space uh, between uh, when the, the rapture and the furnace of fire. It's completely out of uh, chronology. And all these thousand years, where are the tears? They're the, not in hell. They, they are, are in, prison. in prison. The tears who, go, who died. Yeah, this, this people that there is The oh. Bible gives uh, a prison, there is a spiritual prison where the, where the people without Jesus are kept. The mm -hmm. people, the wicked, the unregenerate, uh, totally bad people are kept in a prison after they die and they're waiting for the judgment. Mm -hmm. I mean, the devil will be kept in prison. Revelation 20, 1 to 3. Yes. Okay, for and waiting for years. the end. Of, yes. Okay, the demons are kept, in, some of the demons, the worst demons are kept in prison right now. In Jude, uh, verse 6, 1 6, uh, they, they are kept in chains. Uh, Okay, also the people who died in the days of Noah, I said the people who die every day who are not saved, they are kept in a prison, in a spiritual world. Okay, and waiting for the judgment. And that says where? You can go to First Peter three nineteen. It talks about that. It talks about the spiritual prison. Three nineteen. Yes. Let me check. Three nineteen. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, go ahead, read it. Uh, uh, 19 and 20, actually. From 18? No, from well, 19 is fine. It talks about Christ yeah. who died in the flesh, yeah. verse 19, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, See? which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing. Were in few that his eight souls were saved by water. So he's saying here the people who died, the spirits of the people who die, that's yes. what he's saying here, yes. go in a spiritual prison. Understand? And there they wait. Yeah. Okay. Also, chapter 4, uh, there yes. is something along the same line. And uh, you can start uh, uh, verse 5. 
verse, uh, verse 5. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Okay. Uh, so this, this dead, uh, which will be judged, uh, where are they kept? Uh, verse 6. For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to man in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Okay, you see, so uh, Jesus went, uh, okay, where is it, verse 6, uh, okay, Jesus went to preach the gospel to them who are dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, in other words, the people didn't have a chance. Okay. All right, the people didn't have a chance because, uh, like the Chinese uh, or the, the cannibal in the, in the jungle never heard about Christ, etc. So people die, they don't go to hell, they're not going to go fire. And that people... Uh, People never heard about Jesus, okay? Amen, it's clear, okay, yes. the, the Catholic call it the purgatory or something. The Bible calls it spiritual praise and where they go. And, uh, so is it clear enough? Very clear. Okay. I'll let us ask you another thing. The pre-tribulationists say, if the resurrection in Revelation 20 is the rapture resurrection, then why does it occur well after Christ sets foot on the earth? Okay, so basically what this guy is trying to do here, they're trying to prove... Uh, that uh, rapture uh, supposedly was supposed to, to have happened before the tribulation, right? Yes. That's what they're trying yes. to do. Okay, well, uh, first of all, I don't know where this guy get this uh, imaginary Christ foot on earth, uh, okay, uh, before, uh, before the resurrection and the rapture. According to this question, Christ is supposed to put foot on earth uh, before the resurrection and the rapture. Uh, where do they get this? You see, it doesn't say that in the Bible. It doesn't say that Jesus puts his foot on the earth uh, um, before the rapture and the resurrection. Okay, so let's take this opportunity. They, they mentioned Revelation 20. Okay, let's talk. Uh, shall we talk about Revelation 20? Okay. Talk about Revelation 20. Because we see the, the right chronology of the rapture exactly in this chapter that they mentioned. <laughs> okay, then let's read the Revelation 24 until 6. And then... Uh, Okay. They will find something very interesting. But this is scriptural, okay? And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, what is this? This is a description of the great tribulation. The martyrs who overcame the beast, overcame the Antichrist, overcame the mark of the beast. So we see here a pictures of the saints ruling after the great tribulation. Correct? Right. Verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Okay. So what do we see here? Attention. You can write down. Revelation 20 verse 4 puts uh, uh, number 1. Revelation 20 verse 4 number, uh, means uh, the great tribulations. Yes. Okay. And then uh, next you write. Second step. Revelation 20, 5 and 6, uh, the resurrections. Yes. The first okay. resurrection. So do you agree that verse, verse 4 talks about the tribulations? Yes. Okay. And the resurrection, uh, okay, uh, happens when? After or before the, the tribulation? At the end of the tribulation. Okay, that's clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, do you see that uh, the rapture is here? Not no. yet. No. Okay. The nobody with, but there is a rapture here. I'll <laughs> show you in a second. Okay, now we can make a right connections, okay, right cross reference with the First Thessalonians 4, 15 to 17. And here you get a surprise. So people get a shock. 15 to 17? 1 uh, Thessalonians 4? Yes. 15 to 17. Read. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay, now write on a piece of paper. Yes. Uh, First Thessalonians 4, yes. uh, 15 to 17, it talks about yes. the um, resurrections and the First, rapture. the resurrection. It talks about the resurrections yeah. and then the rapture. Yes. Now, put a number here. What's first and second? Resur uh, the rapture, uh, between rapture and uh, between resurrection and rapture, what's first and second here? Put, well, put some it, number. Yes, it says very clearly, first the resurrection, okay, put number one, the rapture. Put, put the number one there? Yes, I did. Okay, and then after that, what happens? 
And then we which are alive will be cut up together in the clouds. Okay, so what's the number two? Rapture. The rapture. Okay, now harmonize uh, these two passages. Revelation 20, Verse 4 and 6. Yeah. And uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 yes. to 17. Harmonize these three things. Okay. Uh, the, the resurrection, the rapture, and the tribulation. So what's first, second, and third? Okay, Revelation 20. write numbers, please. Yes, Revelation yeah. 20, we write. Red pen. Okay. Write numbers. And everybody listening, beloved brethren, do the same. So we write Revelation 20 from 4 to 6. First, we see that great tribulation. Three things, okay. You have to put rapture, resurrection, and tribulation. Harmonize one to three. Yes. So we see in Revelation 20 from 4 to 6. The Great Tribulation, which is number one. So you put number one there? Yes. Put number one. That's the first What one. would you put number two? Well, in the same chapter, it talks about the resurrection, which I put number two. Then in First Thessalonians 4, from 15 to 17, we see first the resurrection, which was number two, left from Revelation mm -hmm. 20. Yes, yes, yes. And after the resurrection, it says we will be caught up in the air, the rapture. So number three, what would you put? Number three, the rapture. The rapture. Okay, so now so read, read them in order. One, the great tribulation. Two, the resurrection of the dead. Three, the rapture. Okay, and it repeats. It is very, very clear. Well, it's very nice to see the rapture proven from uh, different parts of the Bible, not just in Matthew, Matthew 24 and 29, where it says after the days of tribulation. But here in Revelation 20, it's something you don't hear much people teaching. Do you have any parts of the Bible that can prove the rapture very clearly? Yes, uh, there are many ways to prove the rapture scripturally in many different ways. But it's amazing how in just Matthew 24 should be enough. Obviously, the sounds of the trumpet, the Son of Man will come at the sound of a trumpet. The way, way a trumpet, a trumpet is a signal. Because Jesus knew that the devil was trying to mess things around. A secret rapture would uh, uh, nullify the, 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 what Jesus said, that, that uh, the rapture would be at the trumpet. Mm -hmm. But t talking about the trumpet, uh, another way you can uh, uh, scripturally demonstrate uh, that uh, uh, the chronology is the correct one, the chronology of the rapture is the seven trumpets. In Revelation uh, 8, you don't need to read, we we'll just go quickly. Mm -hmm. I think we have over time here. <laughs> In Revelation 8, uh, tells us that there are uh, seven trumpets. The mm -hmm. seven angels, Revelation 7 and 8, okay, there are uh, nine. And it talks about seven angels with seven trumpets, okay? Yes. And then in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 51, and 52, it tells us that the rapture is going to be at the last trumpet. Uh, being seven trumpet, automatically, uh, we're talking about the seventh trumpet. That's when the rapture... That's what the rapture is. So the trumpet that Jesus was talking about, Matthew 24, 29, until 31, is the trumpet number seven. seven. Yes. Okay, so, so we need to search in the Bible where is when the trumpet number seven sounds. All right, we find uh, this trumpet in Revelation uh, 50, 11. So Revelation 11 is a particular, particular chapter which talks about the tribulations. In uh, uh, chapter 11, verse 2 and 3, it gives us the number of the months, 42, and give the number of the days, 1,260. And then we see the beast there that will persecute the Christian and will fight against the God's uh, witnesses. God's witnesses, they, they receive from God the commandment to prophesy for uh, three and a half years. It gives, God does exactly. 42 months, 1,260 days, they will prophesy. It's written, this number. Is it's written, happened. Revelations 11. I don't have time not to worry. You guys can, okay. you guys can study. And then, uh, so they will prophesy for um, 1,260 days, 42 months. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 7, it says, uh, at the end uh, of the testimony, uh, which is that, uh, after what? After three and a half years. After three and a half years, yes. after 42 months, uh, yes. uh, the beast will kill them. When? At the end of the testimony. That means at the end of the 42 months, which means at the end of the tribulation. Yes. It's the same 42 months as Revelation 13.5. All right? The, the power of the beast, 42 months. At the end of the testimony, the end of 42 months, they are killed. Mm -hmm. So, chronologically, where are we here? At the end of? Well, the tribulation. Tribulation. Okay, then uh, in uh, further up uh, in Revelation 11, verses 10, 11, and 12 over there, they resurrect. Okay, it's no trumpet yet. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the resurrection precedes the rapture. You yes. see, in uh, we we just saw now in First uh, Thessalonians four. First is the resurrection, and then the rapture. So, 
here until verse 7 we see the 42 months of tribulations until verse 12 we see uh, the resurrections and then in verse 15 what do we have the seven trumpet okay mm -hmm. in the seven trumpet which it, it doesn't say in, in there but we know by other scriptures that the seven trumpet is the rapture mm -hmm. especially first corinthians um, uh, 15 51 and 52 it says uh, at the last trumpet is the resurrection so the last trump is the number seven which sounds in revelation eleven fifteen, uh, and that's the rapture and the progression of revelations eleven fifteen was the great tribulation the resurrection the the, the killing of the, the two prophets the resurrections and then the seven trumpets and then the seventh okay. trumpet which we know by the scripture we just quoted is the rapture not only but if you keep reading after Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, when the trumpet sounds, until the end, what does it say? The kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of God. Okay, okay so that's clear. All right, that if it's uh, it, those guys are uh, uh, raptured, the, the two prophets, and, uh, and the, the whole church worldwide raptured before the tribulation, then the, the kingdoms of the world will not become... Uh, the kingdoms of God, but the kingdoms of the devil for mm -hmm. three and a half years. So this is, an, this is another way to prove uh, the uh, rapture by the seven trumpets. But not only, if you go to Second Thessalonians 2, there is another way to prove that when the rapture is. Uh, okay, I don't even read it, you can study. But if it says, sorry, we studied today that the chronology is the rapture, the wrath of God on earth, Armageddon, then the millennium. Yes. So why does it say that at the seventh trumpet the kingdoms of the earth become the kingdoms of God? Because they're not becoming the, yet. Well, it becomes because the, the Christians have been raptured. Yes. Understand? And now, after that, there is only the wrath of God and Armageddon. God already takes control. Okay, okay. Understand? God takes the, over there is only the people are left behind, not like uh, Mr. Tim Lehigh says before the tribulation, after the tribulation. The left behind the tribulation who are supposed to get converted. Okay. okay but already God rules and reign. Okay, in the overall, this is a scripture that talks in the overall because, you know, you need a little bit of uh, the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible. Okay, it's not so in the, uh, uh, it doesn't go into every infinitesimal hair splitting detail. You have to kind of figure out. Mm -hmm. Like it says in Revelation 13, it says, all the world follow the beast of the Antichrist. Well, yeah, that's kind of an overall uh, because we know that uh, the, the bride of Christ, the, the Christians will reject the mark of the beast. So you have to interpret a little bit here and there in the light of other scriptures, not in the light of people's opinions. Okay? <laughs> there is one such interpretation because we mentioned Matthew 24, 29 until 31 where it talks about Jesus sending in his angels to gather the elect. Yes. Now, they interpret this with uh, some scriptures from the Old Testament saying that the gathering of the elect is the terminology they use in the Old Testament for the gathering of Israel. And the elect actually is Israel because it is called like that in Isaiah 45, Isaiah 65. So they say that Matthew 24 talks about the gathering of Israel just like they mentioned it in the Old Testament. It's not the rapture. It's another interpretation. People don't know the difference between Old Testament and New Testament. Look, why don't you go to Romans 11? Romans 11, 7. Romans 11, 7. What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeked for, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Okay, you see, here is a contrast. Israel and the elect, two separate things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Understand? So Israel is not the elect. Mm -hmm. It was not the Old Testament. Now, some Israelites are still elected in Christ. Yes. Okay? Because like this, and then of course, it, this includes also the Gentiles. Why? Like it says in Galatians 3.28, there is no, no Jew, no Gentiles, so there is no Greek, etc. In Christ Jesus, we are all one. Amen. Okay? There is no male, no female. Okay? So the elect can be it can be Jews, it can be Gentiles. But it's not Israel the circumcised in the Old Testament, like it says in Isaiah, etc. Understand? Yes. Is it clear? Yes. It's like in the Old Testament they were elected. But now we are in the New Testament. Things are different. In fact, if you go to Matthew 21, 43, do you want to read it? 
You see, yes. it's like uh, now the Jews, like it says in Romans chapter 2, chapter 2, 28, and uh, Romans uh, 9, verse 6, 7, and 8, is like uh, the Jews are not the carnal Jews circumcised in the, in the flesh, but the Jews are the spiritual Jews circumcised spiritually in their hearts. You know, and so the same goes for the 144,000, the 12 tribe of Israel. They come from the spiritual tribe of Israel. Okay, what does it say that? Well, you can verify, for example, in James uh, chapter 1, verse 1, James is, he, he writes his epistles to the 12 tribes in the scatterations, in the dispersions. Who is James writing to? To the Christians. How does he call them? The 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the 12 tribes, now they are spiritual. So, so uh, uh, is, that's why it says in Revelation 2 9 and Revelation 3 9, they, they call themselves Jews, but they are a synagogue of Satan, etc. Yes. Because the Jews, uh, the only way to, uh, the carnal Jews, they're not Jews anymore, as far as God is concerned. They can only become spiritual Jews in Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are the spiritual Jews. Yes. Like, uh, like James says, uh, the 12 tribes, spiritual tribes, spiritual Israel, spiritually circumcised, understand? Mm -hmm. And like it says in, um, in Galatians 3, uh, 3.28, there is no Greek, no Gentile, no, 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 no Jews, etc. We are all one in Christ Jesus. There's no more Jews or Gentile. Thank you, Lord. Okay, now there is only spiritual Jews in the body of Christ. You say Christ, in fact, which is called the son of David, is not the son of David. Mm -hmm. Okay. In fact, he said that uh, Jesus told that he was talking to the to the Jews and said, that, "Whose son is, is is Christ?" They said, "Oh, David." Then why does David call him my Lord? You see, in um, Revelation twenty two, Jesus is not called the, the descendants of David. Okay, he is called the root of David. You see, Jesus is not a Jew. The Jews can be in Christ, but Christ. He, he, cannot be in the Jews because the Christ does not descend from the Jews. It's flesh that died. Yes, goodbye. Yes. It's not around anymore. Uh, it's, uh, the Jews descended from Christ. Amen. Because that was, the Christ resurrected is not anymore the Son of Mary. He's only the Son of God. Because the Son of Mary could not resurrect. He died just like Mary. Okay? Now, what resurrected was the pure Son of God. Amen. You got that? Yes. So, in fact, uh, did, did you find the scripture there? Matthew, Matthew 21, 21, 43. 43, read what it says. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Okay. Who is Jesus talking to here? Keep reading, verse 45. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spoke of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. So is he talking to the priests and the Pharisees? To the Jews, yeah. To the Jews, okay. So he says, the kingdom of God, verse 33, shall be taken from you and given to a nation. So the Jews are not anymore uh, uh, the, the God's people, you understand? The kingdom yes. of God taken away. They don't belong to God's kingdom anymore. Yeah, they call themselves Jews. Yeah, Jesus was born uh, in the Jews. Well, the son of Mary, okay, yes. the flesh. But the seed was of God. And what resurrected was the Son of God. Amen. You got that? Yes. So attention of false doctrines. God doesn't have two people. God's people A and God's people B. It doesn't have Pentecostal, Baptist, Catholic, or Protestant. No. It doesn't have the Jews and the Christian. He has one people. What is it called? Only the body of Christ. Amen. You got Jesus that? Name. Thank you, Lord. Okay, do you want to read Romans 2.28? Romans 2.28 For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the latter, whose praise is not of man but of God. Okay, so he's saying here, the, the normal Jew, the Jews which are Jews outwardly, they are not Jews. I mean, this is <laughs> this is not shocking for the Jews only. It's shocking for those Christians who were for Christians who proclaim that the Jews in Israel are still God's people. But in Revelation 11, God calls it Sodom and Egypt, mm -hmm. where the Lord was crucified. Jerusalem is called Sodom and Egypt. It's referring to the Jews who are not in Christ or will never be in Christ. But the Jews who will be in Christ, they, are, they will become spiritual Jews 
because of Christ, not because of Moses and the circumcision. In the book of Galatians, Paul got upset and said, these guys are preaching circumcision, let them be castrated. They can... <laughs> He's like, he gets upset. I mean, he fights against the carnal Jews in the whole New Testament. Jesus, in Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9, he calls them a synagogue of Satan. The, the Jews reject Christ. Yes. Understand? Amen. They will only turn to Christ in Revelation 11 when they see the rapture, they, the 7,000 get killed and the rest get praises to God, they, they get converted to God. That's the remnant. And this is the remnant. That's the famous remnant of, of Romans chapter 9 and 11, the remnant. Okay, they, they get converted at the rapture. Amen. Okay, like it says also in, in uh, uh, Zechariah chapter 12 and 14. Okay, so, uh, I don't know, did I cover it enough? Yes, okay. I think so. so. But I want to say that uh, to study more detailed this uh, class about the spiritual Jews and the carnal Jews, we have on YouTube uh, more messages about who are the 144,000. You can listen to it and uh, read it with the Bible next to you so you can understand clearly. Also, I want to mention about the um, rapture, that we have teachings on YouTube, very detailed, explained with scriptures from different parts in the Bible, why the rapture is after the Great Tribulation, as well as the brief chronology that we gave before, the end time chronology. We have uh, categorized videos on YouTube. If you go to um, our end time 7777 account on the playlist, you will find the whole playlist called end time chronology. And there in order are all the end time events, but they are explained abundantly with scriptures and you can also send in your questions well one more thing i would like to say about this uh, look uh, uh, okay second Thessalonians 2 something very interesting see even then uh, the devil was trying to spread lies to the border of the brethren you know shake the brethren in mind and spirit you know hey, look second Thessalonians 2 paul was saying now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, in, the, in other words, the rapture, okay? Yes. And by our gathering together unto him. This that's is the that, rapture, yeah. Yeah, that's clearly the rapture. Mm -hmm. That you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, uh, that the day of Christ is at hand. So people were already bothering, there were false prophets bothering the church already at that time, that uh, about the coming of the Lord. They're trying to mess things up. Uh, it seems like written for today. Like there are false <laughs> prophets, uh, yes. you know, trying to, to bother say, the to church. Up hand. And then he says, uh, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, that's the rapture, except there be a falling away first, that's the apostasy which is happening today, and that man of sin that's the Antichrist, be revealed the son of perdition. Yes. Okay, this is very important. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. You understand? So we are reading Second Thessalonians 2, from yeah. 1 to, yeah, uh, this to is 4. 1 to 4. Okay, good. So you understand what he's saying here? Say, uh, don't let uh, people uh, trouble you that the rapture is going to happen before the showing of the Antichrist. Yeah, that's clear. In the, so not only, but before Jesus ca comes back, uh, the Antichrist will be sitting, will have to sit in the temple of God, which is not built yet, mm -hmm. showing himself that he's God. Yes. I mean, that's exactly in the middle of the tribulation. You got that? Yes. So there cannot be secret rapture if first... Uh, the Antichrist has to come. First, he has to sit in the temple of God. First, the temple has to be built. And first, he has to show himself that he's God. Yes. All right. In fact, uh, if you keep reading, verse 8, it says, And then shall the wicked be revealed, that's the Antichrist, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. This, this is another another thing. You know, we already started before that uh, they, when uh, when Jesus came for the rapture, they, that would be followed by great destructions of the uh, of the Antichrist. It says right here. So, the Lord Jesus shall destroy the the wicked one, the Antichrist, by the brightness of his coming. So, there will not be Antichrist after the Lord's coming. 
Okay, we already explained the chronology before, etc. Yes. Okay, so he's talking about the gathering. Okay, the gathering, uh, verse one. Okay, the gathering. So after the Lord comes to the gathering, we follow the eventual by the distractions. The Antichrist is not going to be around. So how in the world can these false prophets come and tell us that it's a secret rapture? It's no. It cannot be secret. It will be so clear. Every eye shall see him. Mm -hmm. Revelation one seven. Um, Matthew twenty four twenty nine. Every every eye shall see, but and eventually it will eventually, uh, in due time, be followed by a distraction. So the Antichrist, there will not be no Antichrist, no tribulation, no mark of the beast. It will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if uh, at the coming of the Lord, the Antichrist will be destroyed. Okay. Um, and rapture and then eventually followed by destruction. All right. Yes. So if it will be destroyed, there cannot be tribulation after that. That exactly uh, shows a very precise that they, they, they cannot be a secret rapture. All right, so it's very, very clear. Yeah, um, it's very good a connection of the first verse with the third. Concerning our gathering together unto him, and, that, here, and here also it answers the question that the gathering is not the gathering of Israel from the Old Testament. No. It's our gathering together unto Jesus. No, no, they come in our Lord Jesus Christ oh, and yes. our gather together unto him is exactly what uh, uh, he says uh, in the in this very same uh, pardon in the uh, to the very same people Thessalonians in the previous letter the fourth chapter he talks of exactly so yeah, he repeats exactly. as a messenger first Thessalonians for about the yes again the, the rapture, the rapture. he says that day verse three that day shall not come except first the man of sin be revealed who opposes exalted himself above God. Exactly. And he sits in the temple of God. That exactly. day will not come until the Antichrist it, will do all this. And yeah, not only that day will not come until the temple is built, the Antichrist is, right. is revealed, he sits in the temple of God. That's tribulation. So this is sound scriptures. <laughs> so and uh, opposed to what is uh, all these false prophecies are teaching that uh, is going to be secret. So, but, but this is a secret rapture is so secret that even God doesn't know, even the Bible doesn't know. All right, and uh, in uh, John sixteen thirteen, uh, Jesus says, "When the Holy Spirit will come, and He has come in the Pentecost, He will reveal you all things, and He will show you things to come." Amen. All right, it, it's true that two thousand years ago. Um, says uh, when the Son of Man, nobody knows, yes, even though no one knew, etc. But it's also true that when we need to know, He will tell us. He will, in Daniel 12, 4 and 10, it says uh, that the wicked will not understand the end time, but God's people will understand. Amen. So we are supposed to understand the Bible. Yeah, it's written in riddle and parable, but God, like, it's, like Jesus said in Matthew 13, uh, 10, 11, He says, Unto you it, it is given. To know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Amen. So Amos three seven, God will do nothing except uh, he, he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophet. Psalm twenty five, God reveals his secrets to, to his people. So um, there is nothing secret that God will not reveal uh, to his prophets and to his people because that's why the Bible is written. The Bible is not written in a way that uh, God's children are not going to know. God's prophets will know. It's only the devil's people who don't know. The false prophets don't know. The false teachers don't know. But we know. And in fact, uh, we will be able to count the days when Jesus comes back. As soon as the Antichrist signs a covenant, seven years, you can count seven years. Uh, you know that as soon as the covenant is signed, you can count 1,260 days. You know it's going to be broken. The abomination will be placed. And then you count another 1,260, and that's the rapture. We will know the days. No, I knew the years, Genesis 6 3. He knew the days, Genesis 7 4. Thank it's you. It's so clear. And it's only scripture. You don't have to believe me or anybody else. You just, they're just scripture. Scripture by scripture by scripture. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all and God bless you, Brother Joseph. Amen. And yes. actually, actually, this whole class came up because of the questions that you listeners write in. That's why you are welcomed to write in. And, uh, Brother Joseph, thank you for the abundant mm -hmm. answers, the abundant scriptures. Now we need to go back and really study carefully everything until we understand and we put it in our hearts so we can also answer other people who are confused. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's pray for the Lord to bless and protect our beloved brethren 
who may be in situation now that maybe they don't want to. Maybe they grew up in a church that is teaching a bunch of lies and everything, but for the Lord to protect them and lead them and protect them from contamination of the false doctrines so that when the Antichrist comes, they, they will not be caught unprepared, like Jesus said in Matthew 24. They, don't, they won't even have time to go pick up a jacket. He says it is in the field, they don't let him go back home, etc. They, if you're going to pick up a jacket, you're going to take your wife, your children, your passport. It would be terrible. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray for these brethren who you, grew up in their own church. They were winners, maybe by Jehovah's Witness or by whatever, by some some sectarian Christian church, or even maybe some good church where maybe the pastor is off the track or teaching wrong doctrines. But, but, but I want to thank you for the good church, for the good Christian, for those who are teaching Bible and only Bible, not just repeating what somebody is photocopying in a book or stuff like that. Lord Jesus, bless the dear little sheep. Uh, bless and protect them. You give them wisdom. We help them to come to you, Jesus, and get, we get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Not baptized in TV, world, uh, money, no. etc. Worldliness. So get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Baptized in obedience. Uh, really wanted to obey you and follow you. Lord Jesus, lead and guide our, your dear sheep, your dear children to the Bible, to your truth to your love, to your obedience, to follow when you enter Christ is coming, the mark of the beast is coming, tribulation is coming. That's why the devil wants, wants to say, no, it's not coming. It is coming. And all these uh, brethren over there sitting around doing nothing, they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be attacked. They're going to be very surprised. And there will be other distractions like it happened in many countries where the Christians have been unprepared as yet. This tribulation against the Christians are now persecution in 117 countries. Lord Jesus, I pray, Jesus, that you have this bread to come to you, to get on their knees, really seek you, search you, not go to sleep by just somebody because somebody preaches good and is yelling hallelujah all the time. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless and protect you, dear sheep, your children. Amen. Give them wisdom. Give them the wisdom, which is so many of us we don't have, to come to you and your word, Lord Jesus, Thank and Jesus. to find some real teachers, some real churches, some real brethren Thank who you. want to reach the lost, who want to preach the gospel, who want to follow you, Amen. not just build a church made of bricks, dead bricks, but build churches made of living stones. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. In Jesus' name.